When I started out as a, a fashion reporter a long, long time ago, there was really nowhere that models could go for any help about any health-related issues. And people just didn't really talk about it. Really skinny models. I think we got to the point where we didn't even really notice them, I'm very ashamed to say. And I think it's, um, it's very good that we're now sort of starting, I say starting, to address these issues. There are degrees of vulnerability. I think if you're a model, you really get it, you're front line. I mean, I still hear from models that they get told that they're too big. I mean, E.D. Campbell said there had been intimations that she was a little too big for some of the clothes. This is unbelievable. This is someone who is a sample size, so that's an, a small eight, and she's very tall. You know, Erin O'Connor's been very open about being rejected for jobs because she's too big. I, th this is the part of the industry that really makes me very, very cross because, you know, how dare they really? How dare they say these, these women are too big when they're way, way smaller than the average? But I really do think it's down to, um, Actually, I think it's down to people like me um, to call this out as much as we can. And when I say me, I have no power individually, absolutely zero, but collectively we do. I, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times when I'm looking at photographs to use from the runway shows for the Daily Telegraph, where I cannot use them because the models just look ill. And it's not just that the readers get furious. I don't want to promote those images. It doesn't look nice. It would be fantastic to get as many, to get all designers on board with, uh, with the Be Well Collective. I mean, I think that's a very um, no-brainer, active mood for them to do. And to show responsibility, and, and do you know what, I think that is a big change in fashion because I think in the past, designers would have argued that they have no responsibility other than to just make fashion. Brands are falling over themselves now to show their eco and sustainable um, credentials. So th this, is the this is the next thing. At the shows, I think people get really lonely and isolated at the shows. And that, I can tell you, goes for the fashion editors just as much as it might go for uh, a new 17-year-old model. My advice would be, I'm not, ugh, that suggests I've got it sorted. Um, I think, find a little cohort of good friends. Um, don't cut yourself off during the fashion month, because I used to sort of think, oh, I'm going into a tunnel now, because it's so intense, you're working 24 seven. When you're awake, you're working. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't call my friends back, I'd just you know, say, I can't talk, I can't see you in a month. But now I don't, I make time for my friends. My personal thing is I walk everywhere because I've, I've never really got on with meditating and I think a lot of people then get very stressed by the fact that they're not very good at meditating. You know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. It's not the be-all and end-all. So I walk. I don't sit in those limos anymore. It's so bad for the environment. It's embarrassing. I, I mean, I just am ashamed when I see that sort of uh, bottleneck of black limos outside shows, it's, it's ridiculous. So I walk a lot and it's really enjoyable. And I've got to know that these cities now that I've been to many, many times and never really kind of found my way around. So find your thing, find your happy thing and do it. And, um, and don't live in the tunnel. What you're doing at the Be Well Collective is just amazing. It's the kind of support that I would want if I was starting out in the industry, I mean, not even as a model, I think for, you know, for anybody, it's just so nice to be able to talk in a non-competitive atmosphere, because that's the other thing. It is the freaking Coliseum at those shows, whether you're on the runway, or you're writing copy, or you're shooting pictures, or you're some um, influencer, you know, it's just, it is horribly competitive. Try not to compare yourself with other people. Do your best, and you know what your best is. You know it better than anybody else, so... And actually, try and be nice, and don't get um, sort of dragged into some uh, negative conversation, whether it's WhatsApp or whatever the heck it is. Just, just withdraw from that, because it doesn't, doesn't make you feel any better. PMA. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, you can make yourself p more PMA. I was definitely a pessimist when I was a kid, and I got that from my mum. And then my husband, I think one of the reasons I married him was because he, he, he's such an optimist. And early on in our relationship, I used to say to him, okay, so you put the positive spin on this one for me, and then I'd regurgitate whatever woe had befallen. And he would always put a positive spin on it, and I've learned to do the same. And I think often pessimists think, I'm gonna short circuit the disappointment and just tell myself it's all terrible now. But it's ridiculous, because the dis it, it might all come out right. I mean, there's a 50-50 chance, right? So why not just enjoy some positivity until you absolutely don't have to. And usually when it, when it does hit the fan, it's, it's not usually as bad as you think it's gonna be. So I think you can really cultivate um, optimism, I really do. Be Well Collective is a not-for-profit organization. So all donations, um, of any magnitude are really welcome and also they go direct into the organization so it's very well worth donating if you can't donate then just share share the, spread the word on social media because it really is providing a very useful service to this industry that we all love and enjoy but also know has got a few issues that could be improved <laughs> <laughs>